In starting this video, I would like to begin with the famous quote of a political scientist Francis Fukuyama, which states, what we may be witnessing is the end point of mankind's ideological evolution and the universalization of Western liberal democracy as the final form of human government, leading us to believe that no further improvements are left to be made. For clarity, you need to listen to that quote again. Now, according to conventional political ideas, a decentralized and wholly voluntary system of governance should not be possible, let alone optimal. However, the success of Bitcoin as a monetary and social experiment therefore have shattered this very narrative. And unlike other systems, its organization is not defined by power structures, but by voluntary consensus and open competition. Now. Take democracy, nearly unanimously considered in Western academia as the most optimal form of governance, it seeks to fill positions of power in the most egalitarian manner possible using popular vote. Well. Like other systems of government, though, democracy never actually questions the necessity of positions of power. Rather. It is an underlying presumption that power, the ability to compel others, is a necessary prerequisite for organizing collective efforts in the most socially optimal manner. If it is really so, what happens when we can't force our peers to conform and comply? What do we do when there is no one in charge? These are the questions facing cryptocurrencies, making them not just an experiment in monetary theory, but also a radical experiment in decentralized governance. How does such a system work you may ask, and can ever it prosper? Well, you can get the answer to this question, only if you watch this video till the end. Initially, the lack of any central leader or decision-making body in this system can seem like a significant drawback. Well, a blockchain adage says to that. This is a feature, not a bug. Governments and corporations both depend on such figures to make decisions on behalf of the collective group. But as you know, one person's knowledge is limited, and they can always make mistakes. And misdirected decisions from top authority can and do often bring ruin to both companies and nations. Yet, it is undeniable that like all else, Bitcoin's utility and growth face challenges which require solutions and directed effort. Fortunately, the lack of a structured hierarchy poses no actual barrier to problem solving. Instead of convincing one key decision-maker, energy is better spent on competing in the market. And anyone is free to submit ideas, contribute code and build applications on top of the network. This means anyone anywhere in the world with an internet connection can participate in key decision-making, not minding age, location or race, which to me is incredibly amazing and the type of world we dream to build. I mean. A world in which everyone, irrespective of who you are, participates in making decisions that govern our daily lives. You know. We've been watching life from the sidelines for too long, and now is the time we can all take part in the mechanisms that govern our daily lives with the power of decentralization. And blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFTs, DAOs and all the emerging technologies are giving back to the people the power they lost the government long ago. Now, the appeal of the DAO's movement is fueled by the sense that almost all of the democratic processes are broken in today's society, in that, despite ever greater interconnection, our national and international governance structures are failing to solve problems of the commons. Mismanagement of public health, food supply, water and air quality has dire impacts worldwide. Whether we like it or not, the actions of one person in Wuhan can have global ramifications, and we've seen this play out on different occasions across governmental and non-governmental organizations like the UN and all of their agencies. Well, all of that aside. But it might interest you to know that DAOs will be solving all of the tons of problems that's associated with today's governance system, please stay with me and find out how. Now, trust plays a key role in today's governance system. I mean. The reason we elect or appoint leaders of our nation is because we trust them with the power to make great decisions that will govern our lives and bring us the future we collectively desire a people. So, trust is key in today's governance system and therefore can't be replaced for anything, digitally or physically. I mean. The reason people are using cryptocurrencies or digital currencies today is because they trust the blockchain technology that makes that cryptos workable. Now, is it possible for you to organize with other people around the world, without knowing each other and establishing your own rules and making your own decisions autonomously all encoded on a blockchain? Well, the answer is yes. 
it is very much possible with DAOs, which is impossible in today's traditional governing systems. The technology of the blockchain has led to lots of innovative ideas like cryptocurrencies, DeFi, NFTs, and now DAO. The DAO is one major invention that is challenging current system of governance. It is changing our perspective about how organizations and systems should run and it has also placed further importance to the idea that the optimal form of governance has nothing to do with hierarchical structures. You see, most organizations are still conducting meetings behind closed doors and only a select few are behind the decision-making process. This is what DAOs aim to eliminate. Yes. DAOs will eliminate these localized positions of power, giving every member of the organization the ability to participate in making decisions that govern the organization. Hi, I'm Waffer. Sam Tuchukwu from Project Cryptocurrency Education. And welcome to today's episode of Crypto Pink Board Monday, where we take complex cryptocurrency topic, write them down, and explain them in simple English so that anyone who cares can easily understand. Basically, we shall be discussing everything you need to know about DAOs. But before we dive in deep, let's look at an overview of what the video entails. Okay, so we would talk about what DAOs are, the problem they solve, the history of DAO, how DAPS works and its structure, the difference between a DAO and a traditional organization, the characteristics of a DAO, examples and use cases of DAOs and finally, the future of DAO. In case, you don't have all the time to watch from beginning to end, you can use the chapters in the description below to navigate to the area of your choice, but I would encourage that you watch from beginning to end, as that will help you understand the topic perfectly because all information shared is linked to one another. So, a DAO is short for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. It is decentralized, meaning that there is no central leadership, it is autonomous meaning the idea takes a life of its own and organization meaning that it can have its own rules, such as how to manage its funds and decision-making process for scalability and growth. So, basically, a DAO is roughly an organization that is run by a code agreed by the people who started the DAO. It is an entity with no central leadership and the decision-making process and treasury management are done on the blockchain technology. You can think of a DAO as an internet-native business that's collectively owned and managed by its members. They have built-in treasuries that no one has the authority to access without the approval of the group and the decisions are governed by proposals and voting to ensure that everyone in the organization has a voice. Well, in a DAO, there is no CEO who can authorize spending based on their own whims and no chance of a dodgy CFO manipulating the books. Everything is out in the open and the rules around spending are baked into the DAO via its code. So, how does DAOs work? A DAO is like any traditional organization. The big difference is that it is completely autonomous. It operates completely, transparently and independent of any human intervention including its original creators. How is that possible you may ask? Okay, imagine an autonomous Uber transportation company mind you this is completely futuristic, but just imagine an autonomous Uber transportation company. Let's call it XUber. Now, XUber has been created as an alternative to centralized transportation companies by a group of developers and they are self-driving. So, there's no driver. When they started, these developers set up a series of interconnected and automated smart contracts on an open blockchain line like Ethereum. These smart contracts will trigger invoices, collect payments from people who ride in the Uber car. They would also be responsible for maintaining the cars and adjust prices according to cost. Everything is done almost without human input making it more efficient and streamlined. That's a perfect example of how a DAO works. Well, every DAO is premised on three major things, which are, smart contracts, sets of rules known to all members and a token that can be spent within the system for rewards. The smart contracts are the backbone of the DAOs, and they are very important because a faulty smart contract can put the whole project at risk. The rules and the tokens are encoded in the smart contract. The contract defines the rules of the organization and holds the group's treasury. Once the contract is live on Ethereum, no one can change the rules except by a vote with the token of the organization and if anyone tries to do something that's not covered by the rules and logic in the code, it will fail. 
Also, because the treasury is defined by the smart contract too. That means no one can spend the money without the group's approval either. This means that DAOs don't need a central authority. Instead, the group makes decisions collectively, and payments are automatically authorized when votes pass. Well, DAOs involves everyone in its mission, but members have different levels of benefits based on different levels of input. Now, from what we have said, we can outline some key characteristics of a DAO. So, the number one characteristics is that it enables people to self-govern themselves without facing any bureaucracy or hierarchical hurdles like you would find in a formal organization. Number two is that the DAO source code is embedded in a smart contract on a blockchain which specifies the rules for interaction among members, governance, voting powers, etc. Number three is that these rules are self-executed without the need for any human intervention which is impossible in today's traditional organization. Number four is that there is no need for a central governing authority dictating control over the organization which is still very contrary to today's traditional organizational operations. And the last one is that the properties of the blockchain which includes transparency, cryptographic security, and decentralization are also inherited by the DAO, which is very much interesting and why DAOs are making a huge difference. So, why do we need DAOs? And what really makes a DAO different from a traditional organization? Well, you know that when you want to start an organization with people that involves funding and money, it certainly requires a lot of trust in the people that you're working with. But it's hard to trust someone you've only ever interacted with on the internet. With DAOs however, you don't need to trust anyone else in the group. You just need to trust the DAOs code, which is 100% transparent and verifiable by anyone. Unlike the traditional organization where activities are typically private and limited to the public and anyone can manipulate figures. So, one difference between DAOs and other traditional organization is that the leadership and decision-making are transferred to a distributed network of autonomous participants unlike the traditional organization that follows a top-down hierarchical model of leadership with a centralized authority on top, for example a CEO. In simple terms a DAO is fully democratic while the traditional organization is hierarchical. Aside that, every single person is involved in decision-making and everything that happens in the organization, making every member important and having a real sense of belonging. Another difference is that a traditional organization uses legal contracts to work with its employees, whereas, a DAO simply makes use of decentralized smart contracts. Also, the services offered in a DAO are handled automatically in a decentralized manner, but in a formal organization services require human handling and are centrally controlled and also prone to manipulation. Now, DAOs can fall into different categories depending on their structure, modus operandi, and technology. Let's take a look at some of them. Number 1 DAO category are operating systems, operating systems are standalone platforms that allow organizations to create their own DAOs. Key projects in this category include Orca and Colony. Number 2 are protocol DAOs, these are the most common category of DAOs. They are decentralized autonomous organizations that use tokens as a voting metric to implement the protocol and financial changes. Key projects include Uniswap, Maker, Yearn, Synthetic, Curve, and more. Number 3 are investment DAOs, these DAOs supports capital pooling for various DeFi operations and investments. Key projects include the LAO, BitDAO, and more. Number 4 are grants DAOs or grant DAOs are more like decentralized venture capitalists with communities, where governance tokens are used to vote on capital allocation. Key projects include Audius Grants, Molot DAO, and more. Number 5 are collector DAOs. Collector DAOs are meant for NFTs and artists to support fractional or complete ownership of art and content. Key projects include Flamingo. Number 6 are service DAOs. Service DAOs are talent hunting and acquisition model for agencies and individuals. Key projects include Metaverse DAO, DAO House, and more. Number 7 are social DAOs. Social DAOs are decentralized platform for interactions like social networking. Key projects include Seed Club, FWB, and more. Number 8 are Media DAOs. Media DAOs are more like a decentralized news aggregator that is transparent and works in the consumer's common interest. Key projects include Mirror. And the last on our list is Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC, which is more like a combination of all the DAOs we've mentioned above and more. 
Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC is wonder and all in a class of its own, because this DAO is proposing a new financial system that seeks to clear off world's debt and introduce financial abundance. Introduce the era of human asset tokenization. Create democracy of money. Create world's first reserve cryptocurrency. Create equitable distribution of wealth. Pay universal basic income to its members. Restore the lost value of humans through incentivizing goodness and uniting the world as one universal global family built on blockchain. Well, there's more to Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC, which time won't permit us to discuss in this video, so we are already working on a video dedicated only to fully discuss Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC and its wondrous possibilities. So, Ensure you're subscribed to our channel with channel notification bell on, so that you don't miss the amazing video when it drops. And in case you're watching in the future, which is now. Just check out our channel and watch the video and you will definitely be amazed. Now, let's look at a brief history of DAO. Well. Bitcoin is sometimes considered to be the first DAO since it was operating autonomously on an open consensus basis. However, it lacks the basic governance mechanisms that are generally found in a DAO. Also the term DAO is understood today as referring to an organization deployed as smart contracts on top of an existing blockchain and not to a blockchain network as itself. So, the first real DAO was created in 2016 by a German startup called Slock, which was known as the Genesis DAO or the DAO. It was the first of its kind and it was intended to act as an investor-operated venture capital firm. The coding framework of the DAO was built into a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain and was launched with a token sale where individuals were able to purchase DAO tokens with Ether. The owners of the DAO tokens were then entitled to voting rights. The members of the DAO would then vote on different projects to fund and were in a position to profit from their investments by reaping dividends from the gains of the project. Well, at the time it was a great success with a crowdfunding campaign that raised over $150 million worth of Ethereum making it the biggest crowdfund ever. Unfortunately, the DAO was hacked due to the discovery of a loophole in the coding, which led to the hacker stealing $70 million worth of ETH. The bug didn't come from Ethereum but from the code written for the DAO. However, Ethereum soon recovered the money by using a method known as a hard fork in which token holders were given the ability to withdraw their tokens. Terribly. This hack led to the end of the DAO. But, since then several attempts have been made to run a successful DAO and some have been successful like The Pleaser DAO Which collects various NFTs and invests in other assets, the Herstory DAO which collects and funds projects by black women and non-binary artists, the Kamaribi DAO. Which funds women and non-binary crypto founders. The Friends with Benefit DAO. Which is an exclusive social club where you pay to enter and the Meta Cartel Venture DAO. Which is a for-profit business that invests in early-stage decentralized applications. And of course, Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC, which is focused on changing finance as we know it and humanity as we know it. Now you may ask what are the advantages and disadvantages of using a DAO? First, let's look at the advantages. One advantage of using a DAO is their autonomous structure which makes them transparent. The concept of decentralization has fostered the idea of trust and with DAOs you don't need to be worried about the people behind the organization and whether or not there is an ulterior motive. Everyone is judged by the smart contract and every transaction is immutably recorded on the blockchain. The second advantage is that there is no long and arduous process to accept innovations since there is no central authority. With DAO's innovations do not need to pass through different hierarchies before they get to a central authority who make the final decision. Instead anyone can make a suggestion and the suggestion will be voted upon and since the suggestions comes at a fee, people won't suggest vague and random ideas instead the suggestions will be well researched leading to the growth of the project. Another advantage is that DAO solves the problem of the principal age dilemma. In a DAO there is no power play because members see themselves as equally responsible for the growth of the organization. Everyone is responsible for the organization's direction and if there is to be a change in the trajectory, it has to come with the consent of everyone on board. Which is incredible because everyone is responsible all decisions and can't blame others if anything goes wrong. Now, 
The major disadvantage is that it needs everyone to be involved. I know you are probably thinking isn't that supposed to be an advantage? Well. Yes. But, there are times when the code written for the smart contract are buggy and have loopholes and getting the whole organization to agree on how to rectify the issue becomes a time-consuming process. And you know that hackers can operate more effectively given time, so this becomes a huge problem. Another disadvantage is that the legal terrain for DAOs is still subject to the regulatory framework in different nations. Since DAO itself is not bound by borders it comes with the possibility of facing multiple lawsuits from different cities slash countries. Now, let's talk about the use cases of DAOs. But, before we go into detail about this, please give this video a thumbs up, I mean. Hit the like button now, if this video has made sense to you so far, and if this is your first time of coming to our channel go ahead and subscribe now and as well turn on the notification bell so that you will be among the first persons to get notified whenever we post educational videos like this and that will also help you never to miss out on any of our content. Thanks for hitting the like button as that will make YouTube to show this video to many other persons and we all benefit from the information we shared in the video. Now, let's continue. So, there are lots of use cases of DAOs in our world today but we will just look at three use cases, which includes Faith Tribe, Paragen and Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC. Now, Faith Tribe is an open source platform specially designed to give fashion creatives a say both in the metaverse and the physical world. It is the first fully decentralized platform for fashion creatives and it is community owned. The idea behind Faith Tribe is to change the fashion design narrative by contributing to the growth of Web3 while also building an economically viable ecosystem. You know! The global market for fashion apparel is roughly $3 trillion and 15% of this is unbranded. With millennials and Generation Z showing an unflinching interest in fashion, Faith Tribe is looking to leverage their engagement with the metaverse in bringing more brands to the limelight without the help of an intermediary. Now! Paragen on the other hand is a fantastic example of a DAO being used as a project launchpad. The organization focuses on helping projects through the preparatory stage before they launch. From marketing strategy to in-depth technical development, Paragen offers comprehensive advisory support throughout a project life cycle as well as the launching of a project. Paragen also incubates project by searching for talents. When they discover talents, they work with the talents in an advisory capacity. Now, Inks Nation Universal DAO LLC, with its DAO 2 DAO Digital Governance Social Network DAP, which aims to represent the globe as a DAO, continents as a DAO, countries as a DAO, states as a DAO, cities as a DAO, and private entities as a DAO, will make creating a DAO as easy as creating a group chat. With this you can simply say world's future governments will run as DAOs. Which will make a huge difference in our world, because we will no longer watch life from the sidelines, but will now participate in making decisions that govern our daily lives. All thanks to blockchain, the technology of decentralization. To wrap up this video, DAOs are the future of governance, because as we have seen the traditional organization has so many flaws that we can see. It's unclear if the traditional system will change, but DAOs have shown a clear path to a better working condition and staff management. The two unique models for DAOs are the token-based membership and the share-based membership. And both of them have team-centric motive with no sign of superiority complex. Because of these reasons and many more that we cannot outline here because of time, the concept of bringing decentralization into private and public governance has been birthed. As Vitalik Buterin, co-founder of Ethereum cited, most companies are likely to buy into the DAO system as it helps to reduce operational cost and improve the bottom line of these companies' finances. Well, the most important reason why the world will embrace DAO speedily is that it makes every important, as the decisions that govern the organization are decided by every member, irrespective of age, race, location, personality or social status. DAOs gives every member a sense of belonging as there's no central authority that decides for everyone the rules that govern the organization, which is the opposite of what we have in our traditional governance system. DAO is no doubt the future of governance, 
because it is the only system that will give back to the people, the power, we have lost to the government long ago and make everyone truly valuable in our society as the participation of everyone is needed in a DAO. Well, due to the rapidly growing number and diversity of decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, as novel organizational forms, both the participants and developers of these organizations and third parties or stakeholders such as consumers, the market, and government agencies have developed a need for legal certainty in dealing with these organizations. At this point, Wyoming DAO LLCs have emerged as the first structure in which DAOs have been given a legal framework and recognized as formal legal entities. Although, Wyoming DAO LLC is regulated in terms of formation, management, organizational structure, and dissolution, their current legal framework does not cover most of the legal issues DAOs face. Well, to fully understand this, watch our video titled DAO as a legal entity and you can get the link on this video description. That will be all for today's video, but before you go, please, help other persons to see this video by hitting the like button, because when you do, YouTube will show the video to more persons and we all learn and be informed about what DAOs are and why it is the future of governance. Well, if this video made sense to you in any way or you learned anything new from the video drop me an appreciation comment below, for that will be a big encouragement to me and my team. And in case you have any question about cryptocurrency, even if it's not related to this video, drop it below and I will definitely answer them. And if your question is great, we will do a video about it and give you a shout out in the video for asking such a beautiful question. Please share this video to anyone you think it would be beneficial to, and when you do, you're helping us accomplish our mission of educating the world about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and all that's associated with it. And many thanks indeed for watching.